my friends, it's Thursday again. It's Pastor Karen with the Thoughtful Thursday. We're continuing our couple week study on um, the means of grace and places where we know that if we engage um, ourselves that we will engage in the grace of God. And who doesn't need a little bit more of that these days? Isn't that true? So last week we talked a little bit about praying and I encouraged you to um, try to pray in a different way than maybe you're used to praying in a different place in a different posture um, If you don't pray for yourself pray for yourself if you don't pray for others pray for others So I hope that you were blessed um, with a, a new showering of God's grace last week as you expanded um, your prayer time this week we're going to talk a little bit about um, what John Wesley calls searching the scriptures and I always thought that that was interesting because I think a lot of people would um, define that as, you know, read your Bible. But he doesn't say read the Bible, right? He doesn't say read the scripture. That's not the means of grace. He says search the scripture. And so this week I did some thinking about what does that mean? Does that just mean we, you know, open our Bible and, you know, hope that we come to a page that um, God is going to speak to us? And certainly that can happen. Um, but these means of grace that we're talking about are kind of intentional um, actions or experiences on our part. Things that we take one step forward so that we can um, feel that grace of God just pour over us. So searching the scripture. In fact, John Wesley, um, of course, loved the Bible. He is so famous for saying, give me that book. <laughs> he says, at any price, give me the book of God. He says, I have it. Here is knowledge enough for me. Let me be the man of one book. The man of one book. So searching the scripture, what does that mean? Um, that means I think before we sit to open our Bibles to read the word of God, I think that praying, like we talked about last week, saying a prayer to say, God, I'm ready. I'm open to hearing from you in these words in this scripture. So speak to me. Um, help me understand what it is that I'm about to read and, and help me figure out um, what that means for your will for my life. What does that mean that I am supposed to do or be or say um, today as a result of reading this scripture? John Wesley would give us instructions and say that we he sh suggested that we read one chapter from the Old Testament and one chapter from the New Testament every day. And if you didn't have time for that, he says, because he was a quite practical man, if you don't have time for that, just read what you can, essentially. So that would be my suggestion. Just read what you can. Um, so fascinating, though, to read the Old Testament and the New Testament, even at the same time, to really see the parallels. We don't always just see that, right, when we're reading, however. So we need to spend time meditating on what we've read, for sure letting it kind of sink into ourselves instead of just continuing to read words just to get through more pages of the Bible that day, um, really allowing ourselves to, to sit with what we've just read. And then I think um, it's also really important for us um, to not expect always that we're going to get and understand exactly what we've read in the Bible. And sometimes I think the studying of the Word of God for me especially, is really a means of grace. It's a place where I feel really close to God as I, as I dig in, as I study, as I look up words that I'm not sure I understand, words that maybe um, we use in church all the time and we don't have a good um, understanding of what that word means in our everyday lives. Maybe it's an opportunity to see where else in the Bible does it say this? Where else in the Bible is this same message given in a different way? Um, where else in the Bible is this prophet, um, prophetic statement? Where is that prof prophetic statement fulfilled? Maybe we read up in the prophet Isaiah and then in the New Testament we see that, prophet, that prophecy fulfilled. Um, so I would encourage you, if you don't have a good Bible dictionary, find yourself one of those. If, you don't have a good concordance, so that's the ability to kind of see um, where the words are used other places in the Bible, so that you can gather a different understanding of how, in what context are these used. Um, reading commentaries. 
understanding what biblical scholars think of this scripture that you're trying to grapple with today, reading what other people have thought about it might shed some light on what it's supposed to mean in your life. Um, if you don't have a good study Bible, I would suggest having one of those too. Again, just at the bottom of the study Bible, it gives you some, some ideas, some definitions, puts you into some, some cultural um, kind of understanding of what's happening in the, the biblical times that this, um, this scripture might have been written. Um, and then I think it's also really interesting to look at parallel translations or even paraphrases of the Bible. Sometimes just a word cho choice difference um, really does change the meaning for you. It doesn't mean we're changing the meaning of what the Bible says. It doesn't mean we're, you know, someone's trying to interpret that the Bible is saying something different. But I think sometimes just hearing it in a different way, um, maybe reading in a, in a translation that's a little bit more um, common English, right? The common English Bible or the paraphrase of the message. Sometimes that's an interesting way to just get a different perspective um, on the scripture that you're reading for that day. So this week, you can guess what my challenge is going to be for you. Um, take a scripture that you've been reading. Maybe it's your favorite scripture. Take that one. Find a word in there. Look it up. See what the origin of that word is. See where that word or that phrase is used in other places in the Bible. Read a little commentary about how um, what other people think of this. If you don't have a bookshelf full of commentaries or Bible dictionaries, um, everything is available online and a really great place is BibleGateway.com. This is not an advertisement, but BibleGateway.com you know, um, is a really great place to kind of find all of those things and it's free. So you can read um, and look up some of the dictionary um, definitions and you can read some great commentaries there as well. So I hope that this week as you search the scriptures, as you dive in, as you dig in, as you study, not just read the words in your Bible. I hope that you feel that beautiful grace of God just pouring down on you. Um, and I would love to hear about your experiences. Tell me what verses or scripture you've read. Um, you know, tell me what ways you studied it. I would love to hear um, how you're doing that this week. So until then, stay um, focused on the grace of God. Find those means of grace every day. Take care of everyone. Bye-bye.